to church because we know it's the right thing to do. The Lord is saying, please live up to the full extent of the light that you have. Because if you don't, there's going to be trouble. Not because I want to threaten you. I love you. I'm giving you this message so that you can warn other people. And if you're not doing what you're doing, the world will remain unwarned. Read this with me. It says in Revelation 12 verse 17, The dragon was wroth with the woman, and he went to go and make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Titus, brothers and sisters, in closing, has got the most wonderful message to God's people. And I'm going to close off with these last couple of slides and go into the second half of this lecture. In the second half, which is called Elijah's Gold, I'm going to uh, uh, go into more depth. I'm going to put a magnifying glass over the third Elijah people. And I'm going to compare us, the Seventh-day Adventist church, to the first two Elijahs. Listen to what Titus 2.13 tells us. We are looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us, what's this word underlined? From all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. We'll get back to that text in the second half of this lecture. But please notice that the Lord doesn't say he's going to redeem us in all iniquity. He says he's going to redeem us from all iniquity. That means we need to overcome. So is that possible? Well, come back to the second half. But we do know that this text specifically says God's people must be and will be a peculiar people. Today, Seventh-day Adventists are no, no longer peculiar. We watch TV like the world watches TV. We listen to the music that the world listens to. We dress like the world dresses. We eat like the world eats. We run businesses like the world. We drive like the world. God no longer has a peculiar people. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to encourage you. Please, take the time to watch the second half of this lecture. I pray that it'll be a blessing for you. Come, let's end up in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for a wonderful blessing. You've shown us today the three Elijahs, clearly out of the Word of God, depicted for all to see fantastic parallels between Elijah, John the Baptist, and your final Elijah people that are raised as a prophet people just before the end of the world. I pray as your servant that you, Lord, will touch the hearts of those that have watched this message. Bring them back, please, to watch the second half as we now go even deeper in comparing the three Elijahs. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. But most of all, thank you for Jesus. I pray this prayer in his name. Amen. See now your sister. She's been robbed and lied to. She holds her candle without. So carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the lonely, the tired and worn. Hold out your candle for all to see.